What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to POV Pottery. I know it's been a long time. I know you've been missing me. And you've probably been missing these suckers. I got them. All right. Today we're going to make ocarinas. An ocarina is a clay musical instrument. I believe it's an Italian word in origin. What you're going to need are uh, some clay. You'll need some of these whistle sticks. Now I got these whistle sticks at Walmart and they're just called skinny craft sticks but you can also use uh, popsicle sticks if you whittle them down and there's a one special detail that you should notice if you look here see see that edge it's beveled I sharpened it just on a piece of uh, sandpaper rubbing it back and forth at an angle okay so you'll need two of those the other thing you'll need is a little bit of water and a needle tool, okay? What's an ocarina? Well, that's a bisque-fired ocarina. If you have a smaller chamber, you'll have a higher pitch. This is a, it kind of broke it. It's a cuttlefish ocarina. And I got this one. This is a 10-hole ocarina. Um, and look at this, my Totoro Karina. Let's see. All right, so uh, you can make pretty much any hollow shape into an ocarina. And to make a hollow shape, what I like to do probably the most straightforward way to do it is to take two balls of clay that are the same size and just make a pinch pot okay quick pinch pot it doesn't have to be very thin in fact this lip here you want it to be a little bit on the thicker side okay so that you have enough surface area to combine two of those pinch pots together that's tip number one tip number two when you're making your pinch pots is you want those the lip to flare out just a little bit so it's like the shape of a bell or an opening tulip okay and what that helps is when you stick your two pinch pots together they'll be like this and then you can bring that seam in together so it looks like a like a potato if the lips are going in together you're going to have like a snowman and um, that may may not be what you want unless that is what you want okay so here we go get the rim of your pinch pot wet score it up this is a store-bought scoring tool but you can make these pretty easily with a wine cork and if you take a pair of needle nose pliers you can push some sewing needles into a wine cork and you can make something very similar to that Okay, two pinch pots scored up, and I'm going to stick them together, and I'm just going to pinch that seam together, see, and then I like to just go up and down and up and down. This is a construction technique <laughs> I learned from William Catling. He calls it knitting. And oftentimes a lot of my students will like get their clay covered with water to smooth things out. But you don't really need water to smooth it out. You just need to use some pressure with like a, wood, a metal rib. And you can get uh, your piece a little smoother that way you're compressing the clay but your your clay is not getting wet and floppy and soggy and saturated okay the next thing you want to do is add a mouthpiece so I'm gonna take a little piece of clay roll out a piece of clay that kinda of looks like um, a marshmallow and I'll tap it on the table 
so that one end is tapered and it's uh, like, um, yeah, it's beveled. Okay. That way, I'm gonna stick it right on like that on the resonant chamber of the ocarina. Okay, stick that right on. And here's the key trick. The key um, is that your mouthpiece has to be in line with the ceiling of the uh, resonant chamber. Okay, that's super key. What you don't want to do, and what some students do, is they'll stick on their mouthpiece on like this. Now, do you see this little triangle of air between the stick and the, the mouthpiece? That's what you don't want. You want it to be lined up like this, like this mouthpiece over here, okay? And the reason why is when you insert your stick into the mouthpiece, I call this the windway stick, you you want the the stick to touch the ceiling of the interior of the resonant chamber. Let me demonstrate that here. Check this out. Here's a cross section. And do you see how the ceiling and actually the sharp blade shape is touching the stick? That is a key um, criteria for sound for your ocarina, okay? So the first thing I do is I stick in the stick, then I'm gonna rotate the stick to my left, and with my dominant hand, my right hand, I'm going to insert the second stick. Now where am I gonna insert it? This is critical if you wanna have sound. See this line that I just made around my mouthpiece? Um, that line is where the mouthpiece is attached to the resonant chamber and it's kind of perpendicular. You want to add your second stick about a pinky width behind that line. See that? And the angle that you're going to insert the stick at is like 135 degrees at least. It could be more. Okay? Make sure that your sticks are lined up like this. Okay? And then I'm going to insert the stick like that. Watch this. I'm going to pivot on the tip of the stick and then cut off some of this excess clay. And if you look carefully, if you look carefully, you can see some of the wood from the wind way stick. Okay? That's what you want to see. And as long as I have this wind way stick in, I can kind of squash that clay down and make that blade sharp. That's really key. The other key is this part, this wall here, this interior wall. That's called the drop, or what I call the drop. That needs to be 90 degrees. That helps the, the, the uh, stream of air come down into the resonant chamber. So half of the air is gonna come down and circulate. The other half is gonna get cut by that sharp edge of the blade and exit the window, okay? So looking back at my ocarina, you can't see very deep inside of it. Compare it to this one. You see how you can see a dark shadow on this one? The one on my right is unclogged and the one on my left, I, it's clogged, it's blocked. Okay, I need to reach inside and pull some clay towards the mouthpiece. So now, I just reached inside, pull towards the mouthpiece. Now you can see deep inside. And now I've got a nice drop, 90 degree angle drop. The problem is, every time you do that, you're gonna clog your windway. So now I've gotta re-unclog my windway and as I did that, I noticed there's a big, big clay crumb that I can pick out with my needle tool. Check that out. Check that out. See that? Oh, yeah. So there's a big clay crumb. So now my windway should be clear. 
my blade is lined up with the windway stick. I've got a 90 degree angle drop and the window, the window is that little dark rectangle. The window is about the size of a pea. So if you have all of those four criteria, a clear windway, a 90 degree angle drop, uh, your blade lined up with the windway stick, and a window the size of a pea, you should have sound. Let's see if I do. Ooh, I have some sound, but it's a little, little raspy. It's not so clean. So what that tells me is, I probably have some more crumbs inside there that I need to clean out, and sure enough, I do. Let's pull that out, and then try again. When you're making ocarinas, there's a lot of adjustment that needs to happen just to get sound. If you want a full scale, that takes even more work. You need to get like a little tuner and um, work on that. We'll talk about that later. Not quite there. Let's try again. Work on my drop. I'd find that 90 time, nine, 9 times out of 10, the issue is uh, the drop. Clear windway, lined up the blade. I'm getting there. Now, here's the scary thing that you can do that will help. Hang on. Check this out. If you're struggling to have sound, then this and you need to troubleshoot it, this is what I what you can do. You can take your wire tool and cut it behind the window like so. Okay? You take I'm just gonna pull straight through. Now we can take a look on the inside. Oh yeah. See I've got quite a bit of crumbs on the inside there. So, if I take my finger and smooth that out, get rid of those crumbs, that should help my sound a lot. And I can test by putting, closing off the back against my hand. Not quite there. My blade wasn't lined up with my stick. go. That sounds pretty good. Gonna get that wet, get this wet, and then put everything back together. Don't feel bad if you need to open up your ocarina uh, to clean out the insides. Sometimes opening it is the only way that you can see the crumbs and the debris and the, de the detritus blocking your ocarina. Okay. Okay. Let's give that on another try. All right. Pretty good. So uh, that is your. Those are your basic mechanics on how to make an ocarina. So what's up YouTube? Uh, I wanted to share with you again this little image I drew on the whiteboard for y'all and for my students uh, regarding the ocarina. See here, this is the ocarina cross section. All right. And it shows you the four important things, right? The window needs to be about a pea-sized um, window. The windway is clear and it lines up with this, the bottom of the blade. Okay, that's really key. And then that drop, that 90 degree angle drop is, is really key. So if you remember those four steps, clear windway, blade in line with the windway, that 90 degree angle drop and the windway window is pea sized you will have should have a working ocarina
all right guys thanks so much for watching uh peace see you next time